Peanuts first began as a syndicated comic strip, which was written and illustrated by Charles M. Schultz. The original series spanned from October 1950 to February 2000, before living on in reprints after Schultz's death. During the course of its original run, the series became one of the most popular and influential comic strips in the history of the medium. The series revolves around the lives of a group of young children, and a view of the world, in which adults exist but are never seen and rarely heard. The series was frequently characterized with philosophical, psychological, and sociological overtones. Charlie Brown is the meek, nervous, insecure main character of the series. With the success of the comic strips, the series was also adapted into the medium of animation, the most notable of which are the television specials, including 1965's A Charlie Brown Christmas and 1966's It's a Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. Understandably, given the cultural success of the series, especially the animated adaptations, it's had many fan tributes. Arguably the most noteworthy of these tributes is 1986's Bring Me the Head of Charlie Brown. The animation is notable for the obvious talent behind the project and its gratuitous violence and adult tone, in complete contrast to the original series. I wanted to know your address so I could surprise you with a card. That's great. But come to think of it, Chuck, now the surprise is gone, isn't it? So I'll just send your card to someone else. There's also the fact that it was written and directed by the guy who would, years later, pen the script for the classic family Pixar film, WALL-E. During The Simpsons' golden era, which spanned roughly between the third and eighth seasons, the show excelled in regards to writing, acting, editing, and direction. In terms of directors, arguably the greatest ever to helm the show was Jim Reardon, who was responsible for many of the classic episodes of the series, including the universally acclaimed episodes Mr. Plow, when Homer starts a snow plow business, only to have his best friend Barney start his own rival company. 22 short films about Springfield, which features a series of vignettes about the day in the life of various Springfield residents, and Homer's enemy, when a new colleague at the Springfield power plant gets irritated by Homer's laziness. Stay the hell away from me, because from now on, we're enemies. Okay. Do I have to do anything? Nowadays, Reardon is a highly acclaimed animator, storyboard artist, television writer, television director, and screenwriter. His remarkable professional career began in 1987 after he was hired by John Kay as a writer for Mighty Mouse The New Adventures, before moving on to work on the Tiny Toons Adventures and The Simpsons in the 90s. Later, Reardon worked with Pixar and Disney, contributing to the writing of the classic movies 2008 Wally, 2012's Wreck It Ralph, 2016's Utopia, and 2018's Ralph Breaks the Internet. Reardon first studied animation at Cal Arts between 1982 and 1986, during which he produced Bring Me the Head of Charlie Brown, as part of his student project that paid tribute to Peanuts, with subvertive humor clearly inspired by the likes of Mad Magazine, with its extensive history of pop culture parodies. I want to see the drawings for the new kids and the blick! Wow. I will never wash these eyes again. The short film is presented as if it's a trailer for a Peanuts television special, and is done entirely in black and white, in a rough draft looking style. Bring me the head of Charlie Brown! Sponsored by Madison Farms, makers of Ding Dongs, Twinkies, Pooptas, and Wussy Cakes. The film begins with the Great Pumpkin, an unseen supernatural character in the comic strips, who rises from the pumpkin patch on Halloween, putting a bounty on Charlie, dead or alive, which prompts the Peanuts gang to set out to kill him. This Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, another heartwarming holiday special starring the Peanuts Gang. When the Great Pumpkin puts a bounty on Charlie Brown's head, the rest of the gang race against each other to bump him off and collect the reward. The ever-bossing opinionated Lucy tries to get Charlie to kick a bomb disguised as a football. Okay, blockhead. Schroeder, the music prodigy, dumps his full-size piano on Charlie's head. Schroeder, where's your piano? Charlie's dog, Snoopy, bites off his owner's hand. The kite-eating tree, a tree in which Charlie's kite always ends up getting entangled in, falls on Charlie. And the kite-eating tree! The usually timid and philosophical Linus strangles Charlie into unconsciousness with his blanket. 
So, uh, what's the prevailing attitude, Charlie Brown? I don't know, Linus. I feel like someone is out to get me. It's at this point that Charlie realizes that everyone is out to get him. Charlie suddenly dons a mohawk and arms himself with a pump-action shotgun, a submachine gun, and an M16 assault rifle. Charlie then massacres the Peanuts group. See you in hell. Charlie then guns down everyone in his way. And one day at a time. It's a bird, it's a bird. The film ends with clips of various characters severely injured. With an Arnold Schwarzenegger accent, Charlie then makes a declaration. Happiness is a warm pussy. Finally, the screen cuts to him smoking a cigar, in bed with a little redhead girl, the object of Charlie's affection and unrequited love in the comic strip. Turn out the light, will ya? The song Charlie Brown by the Coasters plays over the end credits. He's a clown, the Charlie Brown. Reardon closes out the credits with a note, in which he pays tribute to Schultz, jokingly pleading with the cartoonist not to take the short film too seriously. Reardon makes multiple pop culture references within the short film. Most notably, there are a number of tributes to filmmaker Sam Peckinpah. The title and the basic plot are a play on Peckinpah's 1974 film Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Additionally, The Massacre is a parody of the climax in Sam Peckinpah's classic 1969 film, The Wild Bunch. Stylistically, there are slow-motion death scenes intercut with rapid shots, similar to Peckinpah's editing style. Furthermore, the sequence in which Lucy shoots Charlie from behind and he spins around screaming then kills her is a shot-for-shot -shot take from a sequence in The Wild Bunch. <laughs> Fittingly, the film concludes with a declaration to Peckinpah. Beyond the Peckinpah references, Charlie's mohawk is a reference to antagonist Travis Bickle from 1976's Taxi Driver. Also, in tribute to Westerns in general, Lucy speaks in a similar style to Western icon John Wayne. Are you ready, Lucy? Just a bit it. You're a persistent cuss, pilgrim. In regards to pop culture references, when Charlie's arm is bitten off by Snoopy, the screaming sound effect is William Hanna's scream from the classic Tom and Jerry cartoons. Godzilla squeezing the giant Dr. Pepper can is a reference to the company's ad campaign at the time. There's also a clip of Popeye punching Rocky, as if the iconic cartoon character is reclaiming his rightful place in pop culture as the epitome of strength. Bad, it's a bad. And in a strange twist of fate, Reardon's future employer, Disney is disrespected when Mickey Mouse's head is split open. <laughs> Bring Me the Head of Charlie Brown is far from the only fan film that parodies family-friendly pop culture icons with over-the-top adult themes and violence, but it's certainly one of the best that has ever been produced, due to Reardon's clever approach to making a film that was so ostensibly ridiculous. While the film relies heavily on shock value, there is plenty of depth to the work. The short is a loving homage to various pop culture icons and film and television that he loved, specifically the cartoons of his childhood and the new Hollywood movement, which spanned the mid-1960s to the early 1980s, when a new generation of young filmmakers came to prominence in the U.S. The jokes and references are cleverly thought out and perfectly timed, while presented in an intentionally rough aesthetic, reminiscent of the classic cartoons from decades earlier. 
The film could easily have been a one-note, one-dimensional joke. Instead, because of the thought, care, and creativity Reardon put into his creation, Bring Me the Head of Charlie Brown is more than just a cheap parody of pop culture. Rather, it's a loving tribute to the various multifaceted works of art that influenced someone who would go on and become one of the most important creative minds in modern-day animation. Bad, it's a bad.